he had that um, skill of, do you have you got to put your arm around someone or have you got to lose your temper to get the best out of them? She passed the ball. It, it's unbelievable, but it, it, it was good because we learned. These human qualities are absolutely crucial to be a, a great leader. The hair dryer. <laughs> um, the, the hair dryer obviously is a myth. Um, <laughs> let, let, let me just uh, put that out there. But that, that apparently <laughs> was the treatment that underperforming players received from Sir Alex. And Sorry. basically, he's standing in close and proximity he would, he and he's shouting so hard that your hair goes like shout, this. Uh, shout at you and physically blow you out of the room. <laughs> um, Can I show you a little video? Oh, dear me. <laughs> Do you know what's coming? No. We're not lip reading. I wasn't well that day. <laughs> <laughs> if you were like that on the touchline, I wonder what you're like in the changing rooms. Uh, I was going to get off my chest, out my system, and kick on from there. What I said to them remained in the dressing room. I could be really angry, it could be volatile, it could be... But um, it was over. And the players knew that, they knew that. I never, I never brought up again, I never held a grudge, ever in my life. And when you heard it was called the hairdryer, no, did no. you think... I, was, I didn't like it at the time, yeah. honestly. I was a bit annoyed, you know, but now... You have to, you have to... You can smile. ...voice it in the, the, the comedy yeah. part, you know? We played Benfica away, got beat. We didn't play well, and he was he was shouting at me, and I thought I was one of our best players on the day, and I was thinking, oh, what, what are you shouting? At? So I started going back at him, shouting back, and the problem is, which I, I failed to learn quickly, is that the more you shout at him, the louder he gets, and the more aggressive he gets, and the closer he gets to you. He had that um, skill of, do you have you got to put your arm around someone, or have you got to lose your temper to get the best out of them? I remember him having a go at me at half time, and I had the sort of attitude, right, okay, I'll show him. And played well the second half. So then he quickly knew how I would respond to him losing his temper. That followed me for the next 20 years, so it was a big mistake early on. Giggsy sometimes would have to do one thing wrong in a half. Half time comes, he hammered gig he would hammer Giggsy. But that was to show the other players no one's exempt from getting hammered and you better all fix up because I'll be coming for you at full time if you don't sort this out. I remember sometimes uh, when we do it something bad or we lost uh, some games, he, he kicked the chairs and he kicked the boots, he kicked everything, the, the waters, the drinks, and he's so red and he should pass the ball. It's unbelievable, but it, it, it was good because we learned. The great thing about the boss was that the next day it was forgotten and you'd be walking towards him or approaching him the next day thinking, is he going to have a go at me? And he would just crack a joke or he would talk about the next game. And how often was it? You're just generally furious, you've got to tell people, and how often was there a bit of calculation? A little bit of... Sometimes, I mean, sometimes I would lose my temper when we win. Now, the real reason for losing your temper is, is because of expectation. I could never visualise this losing a game, you know, when I, by the time I'd picked my team, done the tactics, had my team talk, I was confident we'd always win a game. But, of course, you don't win every game, that's a fact. But when they dropped below their expectation, that annoyed me most, you know? No player was too big to be spared the hairdryer. Ince, Van Nisselrooy, Beckham, following that famous bust-up with a flying boot. No player except, perhaps, Eric Cantona, United's iconic French superstar, who got very different treatment even after a spectacular lapse in discipline. I want to take you back to a moment I suspect is hard for you, let alone anybody else, to forget. Let's just take a look. Oh. Did you see that? I didn't see it at all. I was looking at the pitch. But as you know, you see, it was done. It was a problem for the club. Because it gets such headwinds, it was front page, and we decided to have a meeting at the Old Edge on the, night, the next night, 
On my way, I got a phone call from Richard Greenbury, who was the chairman of Marks and Spencers at the time, Richard. And a big United fan. Big United fan. He says, well, don't let Cantona go. It'll give you great moments of joy. I said, I know that. But, you know, it was the mood of the, the board. So I had to fight the case, look, we must keep him. We can't let him go, we can't give in to, to the mob. And we decided to, find, uh, to suspend him for four months. And the FA were, uh, at the time, were happy with it. But somehow, they added to it. Ahead of Cantona then, seven months of training. Dull, laborious, unfulfilling. Expediency may yet mean that, with regret, club and player part company. But as the great disciplinarian, wasn't your first instinct to think, he's blown it. He's yeah. a great player, I get on with him, but yeah. that's too much. Well, he'd never, he'd never given us any indication that explosion was there. But I decided to, to approach it this way. I would speak to him every day, and I would talk to him about football all the time, and he loved it, you know? And that's why all the players say it was my, my prodigal son. Uh, but I think he needed different attention. He needed different ways of dealing with him. He was a different guy from everyone else. He was an amazing human being. But when you saw that image of him kicking a spectator, wasn't there a bit of you who thought, that's exactly the old discipline that's to stop at this club, I've got to get rid? No. There was something in me that said, I need to do something about it, I need to stand by him, because the world is after him. And it was a bit like um, no one was there to, to help him. And I said, well, it will have to be me, because I'm his manager. I think the thing that amazed me and used to frustrate me at times was his man management. I'd never seen him have a go at Eric Cantona, for example. Some of the players would resent that. Why is he not having a go at Cantona? He's missed a penalty. Or why is he not having a go at Cantona? He had an awful game. The manager knew in the long run that he would come good, that he would produce the goods at the right time. Yeah, his man management was, was second to none. To have always the honesty that allows him to be father, friend, uh, brother of a player, enemy of a player. But enemy for a, a, few, a few seconds. But then the brother comes again, or the old brother, or the father. These human qualities are absolutely crucial to be a, a great leader.